16 tennis. This is outside every day. This is your view. Every day. Every day. You see that, that a lot of the construction workers are uh, being vulgar. They're not wearing safety equipment. Mm -mm. They're not uh, following OSHA procedures. No. They're, um, they have loud music. Um, They're using vulgar language with each other. Okay, so you see a lot of disrespect happening. You have seen construction um, crane operators, forklifters, you know, all types of tractors coming back and forth to this dead end is, is something that you have to deal with on a daily basis. What is this sign right here? This, this was El Lago was over there right down the street. This has been here forever. Wow. And I wanted to say that I didn't want them to demolish it. So you have one of the original signs of El Largo factory. It was a factory, remember? Yeah. They yeah. put us here because we, the, there was nothing but factory industries. They, this is where the poor, the poor was. Exactly. So you kept this as, as, a, as a, a, a momentum, a memory for you because you've lived here for all your forever. life. It's been there forever. And, and you wanted to keep this because it got, you know, because they sold and it was getting demolished. Wow. Who built this house? What, what, uh, Company, what? Uh, well, this was a, a home, one of the first four of the homes that GNDC Corporation uh, development was making back in 2000. So, in GNDC, uh, Guadalupe Neighborhood Association, uh, Mark Rogers. Mark Rogers. So, you bought this home from uh, from a program for mm -hmm. affordability. You know, someone that can come in and afford to to own their own home. So this is the yeah. this is the house of it. Okay. And I was one of his first single moms. And you were a single mother. Yeah, I was a single mom to be able to afford the house by myself. Today with La Prensa, and we're here in, in the lovely home of Miss Janie Rivas, and we're just going to talk a little bit about what's going on around her. She's been surrounded by construction all over her house and development and gentrification. And she's just going to tell us a little bit about what that experience has been like and her encounters with the development and developers that are around her. First off, Jenny, let me um, ask you, how long have you lived here in East Austin? All my life. All your life? And your address is 1610 East 4th Street. Correct. Okay. And how long have you been a homeowner? I've been here in this home since 2000. I closed for my birthday. Wow. Since 2000. So you grew up here. What elementary did you attend? Savala. Savala Elementary. And what's your fondest memory growing up in East Austin? Well, Getting up at, uh, well, we lived at, at Salinas and Riverview at the time. And I would get up at 4.30 in the morning to come with my dad to Pan Am because I had to be at school. And he would come and have breakfast and I would go back with him to the Pan Am. And I would play basketball, practice with Father Gert, who was the, the preacher or the father at um, Christopher Ray Church. And, uh, we would do Bible study at that time as well, and I made my first communion there when I was seven. Wow. So your family and your fondest memories are rooted back since you were as, your, as a childhood, attending Cristo Rey on East 2nd Street, attending Savala Elementary. Uh, who is your father? Can you elaborate? Oh, my dad was Hilario Ancira. Everybody knew him as Lalo. He was the baseball field king in Austin. There's nobody that could beat my dad at lining baseball fields, soccer fields, um, football fields, you name whatever field. But he was known all over Austin for lining the baseball fields and he always worked at Pan Am and he always worked at the hillside. Wow, so two blocks down from where we're at right now, your father was a longtime employee of the City of Austin Parks Department. Uh, for the baseball field and the historical Pan Am Hills site. And in July, he was here with me. He stayed here in my home for about a month when he got out of Riverside Rehab for a while. My 
brought him home and I would take him down there and he would see the old timers that play there during the day. He would sit out there with them and, and drink water and just have a good old time like, you know, like when he used to work and he used to be there with the guys that used to play baseball and those old timers all remember. He was a World War II veteran, my dad. He caught a Japanese grenade and he threw it back at him, losing a part of one of his fingers. Were you say he was a city parks department employee? 43 years. He retired one time and he went back for a second, a second stint, but he was 83 when he retired finally. He couldn't do it. I would help him line the baseball fields on the tractor and I would be there to help him line his baseball fields let me ask you a question. Why is it so important for you to stay here in East Austin? Because this is where I grew up. This is this is my old stomping grounds. This is my daughter went to Zavala. My grandchildren went to Zavala even for a little bit, you know? I, I this is just home. East side is home. And um, is your father still alive? No, my dad passed away in January the 11th, um, just short of his 98th birthday. He would have been 98 on January the 17th. I'm sorry. Um, and that's the only good part of this construction crap that it has taken me so many fights and so many back and forth with these people that I have not had time to sit down and grieve over the loss of my dad. In fact, I had to take collection jars and the jar is still here. I can't take out the money. See here, you have a mural. Is this um, in memory of your father? Yeah. They were demolishing the back back there, This, the things that were already there and the whole house was shaking. In fact, my concrete outside in my driveway has cracks on it now. My foundation has cracks along the bottom. You can see here that that there's there's been foundation break because of, of all the construction. Something he gave me that fell due to the construction and it's not repairable. I can super glue it, but it's not the same not thing. Not any words of apology or anything of that of that nature with um, from the developers, have they sent out like any notices to you about when the development was going to occur or how this happened? Did you even get fair warning that oh, they were going to start construction? Oh yeah, the fair warning I got was I was called inconsequential and I let the man know that I had heard him calling me inconsequential. means you are not important and God does not make or create inconsequentials I'm sorry and how does that make you feel to be called that uh, insulted and I know this man is a racist person who is this man that told you that Joe Myers he said it to Paul Peterson who was just arriving and he asked Paul Peterson asked Joe Myers did you talk to the neighbor and he said uh, no as I told you she's inconsequential at that point, I said, okay, excuse me, I heard that. Just to let him know that I had heard what he had said and I know what it meant. Okay. So I let him know, thinking he might say something in return like, Be apologetic. I'm or, sorry or, okay. or not say something else. The next thing out of his mouth was, yeah, she's an inconsequential chihuahua. So he called you uh, a name, a brand name of a dog. Mm -hmm. Okay. And from that point, what did you do? From that point on, I closed my windows. Decided I don't need to know what the hell is going on outside. Close my. Can you tell me when the assault happened with the city employee. Okay. The assault happened on April the second when I uh, got of this back. this year. Oh yeah, of this year. When I got back from going to eat at IHOP with a friend of mine, Sherry, Sherry Reyes, and uh, we came to get my pills and to go do my blood work. And, and you go to blood work for? 
because I was being tested at the time for cancer. Okay. At that time. So at, right now you're medical. You're also dealing with some medical issues. Yeah. So you're you're you're. There's days that you don't feel good. There's days oh, that yeah. that you you don't want to fight the fight, right? Exactly. There's okay. days that I can't get up even to make myself something to eat. Okay. And ate and came back and I came to get my pills. I first of all I had to tell them that I needed to get inside because they looked at me ugly because I parked my car on the grass. Well, I couldn't park it on my driveway because they were standing on the driveway. I was like, excuse me, y'all need to move. I need to get in my house now. Okay, so you demanded so that I move. So I pulled the, the chain because I have a chain. I pulled the chain and Joe Myers at that time, the other two guys walked off the driveway and walked into the middle of the street. But Joe Myers, all he did was go from right here in the leaning position to a step right here. And I pulled the chain. When I pulled the chain, it, Hit him right here. You, did you feel because he was so close to you, you were trying to enter your home, you were trying to get your medication? He yanked on the chain and that's when he finally moved over and got out of the way. And I swung the gate open. It didn't hit him, thank God. And then? I came in, got my pills, and I went back outside. And that's when everything just went from the hell that it was already in to even worse. Invading your personal space? He was more than invading my personal space. He wasn't getting out of my way to get in my home. Did you get into your car safely or did you get assaulted? Paul Peterson came charging like a mad bull racing across the street there to get to the car, slammed his hands on the hood of the car and then he tells me to stop. He's yelling at me to stop. I mean yelling, yelling, stop. So, so he went and he literally put himself in front of a moving vehicle. Stopped the vehicle, and then what did he do when you stopped he the vehicle? He ran around the corner yelling at me to open the window. So he started to be belligerent, he started to verbally abuse you. His face was red, his arms were like this, he looked like a monster. I sat there thinking, I don't want to open my window, but then if I don't open the window, this is a rental, He, if I open it just a little bit, he can pull it out. Until, by the way, because my car was had shot. already been hit by the construction company. Um, hit before by a construction truck and the city failed to, or the, the development failed to be responsible to take care of it. Window down, he in the car, this is his hand right here. You, if I see you out here, anywhere, even, even an inch, I'm gonna have you bodily removed. I'm gonna have your car towed. So he started to, to harass you he started to get threaten you okay and, and he then, put his finger in your face and he not only put it he hit me right here and it it I saw him through bleary eyes when I was looking at him my eyes watered over because he had so he literally me. touched you he hit me he didn't touch me he hit me he he made my nose hurt okay that so it was, not, it was a, a, a real hard hit with his finger yeah. in your nose to where you you felt pain yeah, I felt pain. Started to feel that you know where is this all coming from? Why all of a sudden the city employee is calling me that I owe this money from five years ago, and now you're starting to feel no. a little threatened. No, I. The minute I got the call from her that she started telling me about the old bill and all of this, that's when I knew I was being threatened. Okay. Because I'm not exactly illiterate. I know that. What you're trying to do is browbeat me and trying to get me to say, oh, well, no, nothing happened, everything's okay, I'm fine. No, I know what she was trying to do. She was trying to scare me into not saying or doing anything against this man, Paul Peterson. So this street that, you, that you're pointing at... Is Concho. Is Concho Street. And how, um, how long has it been closed for you to enter? I see that now you have developed um, an entryway coming from the street of the front of your house inside because you're being blocked from going in. You created on your own. There's yeah. no steps from the city curb that has a no parking tow away zone in front of your home. You're not even allowed to park a car in front of your home. You have no sidewalk and you created steps out of dirt. dirt. Yeah. 
because you can't afford to build anything like this for you to get into your home. Is it blocked? Did they tell you how long it was going to be blocked? Did they give you a letter saying a street closure from the city of Austin? Did they tell you, would you like to, you know, um, be an interested party? Did they, did any, anything come to you as far as announcing that they're closing your street that's going to show them how my gates open this way and he tells me that I need to park my car behind the gate and wait for everybody to pass. If there's oncoming traffic, I need to wait for that oncoming traffic to pass and then pull my car back when it's safe and then I can come in when there's nobody so I don't obstruct anyone's way. So explain on Contra Street, isn't it a dead end? It's a dead end street. So they want you to wait to the people for the come people in to, the condos yeah. here is is her entrance of her driveway that she could once come down on Concho street and open this gate and put her car into her carport and now she's had to cover it with curtains just to get privacy from the workers from the work if i come up this this alley you can back enter. here I can enter the same way just like they can. We can both come in this way, right? But when I'm coming behind them and they're waiting for their gate to open, I don't try to run them over. And and explain to us what condos you're referring to that are right behind the you. The Plaza Saldillo condos. So you also have a, a development that, oh, was, yeah. that took place not too long ago, correct? Right, eight years ago. And, and you also have to deal with with several things from that development. Oh yeah. They like to take their dogs walking and use my outside of right here, outside of my fence. They don't like to clean up after their dogs. They even have had, uh, I've even seen people out there in the back telling me that they can give their dog a bath outside next to my fence. I said, no, you can't. He said, yes, I can. It's the street. I said, no, it is not part of the street because the street doesn't cut the grass. I cut the grass. And I don't feel like having to cut your, cut the grass and clean up where you have given your dog a bath. You need to clean up after your dog or do it in your property. So feeling encroached by all of this, you know, this development that didn't, that took place, you know, within the decade, you know, not too mm -hmm. long ago. And then we have this new development currently taking place so you being the third house on this block left over on the street you seeing your people displays seeing that you've been disrespected you've been assaulted you've been harassed the city has yet to respond to your needs your emails your phone calls your concerns you're crying out and you need help what since nothing is being done how Besides you feeling all of all of this, you know, these emotions, what do you want to happen? What do you want to get done? What how is it that people can help you? By not allowing anything else to go up in the east side. Like monstrosity right here. It's hideous. It makes me feel like like they're trying to bring the slums of New York in here. This is not New York. This is Austin. And as a longtime resident, you don't you, you don't see yourself going anywhere. You see yourself living here to your last days. So, how has this affected your life, and and how is this going to continue to affect if if they don't start monitoring these types of developments? I feel like we're the Indians that are being pushed into a reservation because now we're not wanted on the east side anymore either. Where are we supposed to go? The outskirts somewhere? until they decide that they want to develop out there as well. Do you know, were you aware that the development across the street from you, Chalmers Projects, um, is, is being discussed right now as um, a, new, um, a new development that they're going to, to do. They've offered to give the residents vouchers to go find homes and apartments in different locations promising them that they're going to have a place when they come back but people not really understanding confused how do you feel about that and that's your front yard how do i feel about that i feel like they're being lied to they're being pushed out these were constructed back in the 1930s 
there was a Franklin Roosevelt was the one that the president that signed for this to happen to occur and it these were built in 38 and 39 here in Austin the Chalmers courts were built for the Mexicans and the Rosewoods were built for the black people those both of these were built for two separate types of entities so we could be segregated and we were all on the east side there was no in between in the east side it was black and Mexican right, right. And, and we got along we also here to send a message to future developers who want to come to East Austin you have got to abide by the laws yeah you have got to abide by the laws just because you're coming into a community of color low income you cannot go above the law and you have to respect the community that's here you cannot call us cockroaches yeah, you right. cannot yeah. say we're infested with cockroaches yeah. we are people like everyone else and you cannot degrade us we will not tolerate that here in east austin or anywhere else